UIM experience. All right, and we are back to the ultimate Iron Man experience, but this time, chapter two. Feels good, man, because this chapter seriously changed my life. Well, my ultimate Iron Man's life. So in chapter one, like only 10% of the time it took making that video was spent actually doing the interesting stuff, like achieving goals. 20% of that time was just buying the supplies I need and getting the supplies. And then like the remaining 70% of all that time was just running around the map, taking forever. Always being out of run energy, having literally only one teleport, which was the which is the tree spirit teleport, and that's it. And based on those two things and like some boats, I have to find my way around the entire map. Um, and to say the least, it is so slow this way. So, chapter two, it's all about transportation. I'm not talking Teslas, I'm not talking private jets, I'm talking way better than that. Fairy rings, it's getting some magic levels for teleports, I'm talking about jumpsuits that somehow when you wear every part of the jumpsuit or robe thing, then you get a 30% run regen bonus. Don't ask about it, it works that way. Yeah, I'm talking about graceful, you know it. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be able to be so mobile by the end of this shiznap, you feel? In chapter one, we left off in the Canifus Agility course, running laps and gathering marks of grace. I actually really don't mind this course. It's pretty enjoyable. You get the marks super fast. So I'm gonna be sticking around here until 60 agility. And if I don't have enough marks by then, then I'm gonna be moving to the Sears course to finish off the marks. By the way, I'm looking for a total of 350 because I'm gonna be wearing this graceful a lot. So I gotta be looking good with those recolors though. All right, so no surprise. I leave the Canifus course at 60 agility with only 305 marks of grace, leaving me 45 more to get at the Sears course, which doesn't really bum me out because that's gonna be some pretty good XP and the more agility levels I get, the less time I'll be spending walking anyways. So whatever, so be it. I've managed to get four agility levels over the course of getting 45 marks of grace. So that's about an agility level per 10 marks. Uh, that's either slow marks or fast levels. I would say that was pretty fast levels. But holy crap, I'm so stoked. It's time to go to Berthorope, grab myself that sick looking, not colored graceful set, and then immediately skirt over to the Hosidius house place so I can start getting my favor up. That's right, we're going green, baby. So, although I do really like green, there's a bit of a practical approach to getting the Hosidius favor as well, because with the Hosidius favor, it unlocks two really important things. First thing it unlocks is the woodcutting guild. That's gonna give me access to a rune axe and a really sweet place to AFK woodcutting. And second, that unlocks the tithe farm, which I'm eventually gonna be getting a seed box from, and maybe even the farmer outfit in the future. So really, this is just all around going to benefit my account the most to do the Hosidious favor. Um, and I love the green. I'm one with nature. I'm with the earth tones. You feel? In the process of getting this favor, I busted out like seven free farm levels just plowing the fields. And then once I was at 45%, it unlocked the cooking favor gain where you make food for the armies went ahead and did that got 10 cooking levels and the favor went super fast there um, fun fact a ultimate iron man actually got 200 mil cooking at this place so i guess this is a very viable way to train my cooking maybe i'll come back one day favor locked in grabbing my green graceful i'm looking good feeling good Actually, on my main, I never recolored my graceful, so <laughs> this is my first time feeling cool in my colorful graceful right now. The green man. 
if I wasn't so lazy, I would totally go do um, two more favors, the one that unlocks the yellow graceful set and the one that unlocks the red graceful set, and then color my helmet red, my chest yellow, my gloves yellow, and then my pants green and my boots green. So, all that said and done, I'm totally broke right now, I have no money. My next move is making some GP because, I don't know, I always end up having to buy stuff. And I also want to start buying a bunch of runes because a huge priority of mine right now is getting my magic up. Just for all the teleports and one of my endgame goals is obviously to be deep into lunars because there's so many helpful spells in there. So I know that Agility Pyramid's probably the meta for low level Iron Man GP making, but I'm always looking down the road for endgame. So I watched a settled video where he was fletching, stringing, and then alching bows, and it's pretty good money, especially once you have the ability to make magic long bows and then alch those. Cause you're looking at like over a thousand GP per bow. Um, so I started cutting, fletching, and stringing bows. Obviously with oaks and willows, it's really not that good of money. I spent probably three hours doing this. Got myself 30 crafting, which feels good. Um, 40 fletching, 40 plus wood cutting, and like 10k GP. Obviously not totally worth it. Um, I'll probably come back to this grind another day. But in the meantime, I fell on my sword and went to the desert and started up that pyramid grind because 10k every like 10 minutes is pretty hard to beat on an ultimate at level 30 combat. I was hardly here for any time at all and walked away super happy with 170k GP. Now I'm ready to start making my way towards those fairy rings. In order to unlock fairy rings, I need to have partially completed fairy tale part 2. Um, and in order to even unlock that, I'm gonna need to do Fairy Tale Part 1, Lost City, Nature Spirit, Restless Ghost, and Priest in Peril. I've done Priest in Peril, I've done the Restless Ghost, leaving me Nature Spirit, Lost City, and Fairy Tale Part 1. Starting out, I went for Lost City, which, oh my gosh, this is the easiest quest. For some reason, maybe it's because last time I did this quest was like 10 years ago and I was 12 and felt like it was hard then. This quest was a piece of cake, it took me two seconds. Then, moving on, I went ahead and busted out Nature Spirit, which was definitely more challenging. Being in the swamp is always a little bit scary, especially when I'm only combat 30 and the gas are breaking down my food, but overall it went pretty easy. It felt pretty cool crafting my own silver sickle, you know, really putting that crafty in my name to use. That's the whole reason crafty is in my name, because I like the idea of being self-sufficient and being able to rebuild my account really quick because I can craft all my necessary items and potions and whatever. That's another episode to talk about though. <laughs> Chapter 420, Account Philosophy and why I'm named what I'm named. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I made something stupid like that. With all the requirements busted out for Fairy Tale Part 1, I'm ready to start prepping for this quest. Um, in this one, I'm going to have to fight a level 110, I believe. And you have to use the magic Sakators. And your damage is determined by a combination of your strength and farming level. So my strength is like one <laughs> and my farming is seven. To get some quick easy levels, I'm gonna do the goblin recipe for disaster subquest, which is gonna get me up to 22. And then I'm gonna do waterfall quest, which should get me up to 30 strength. Um, and then I'm pretty much ready to party with this tangle root boss. Goblin subquest took two seconds. Now I've got the farming level I want. And then the waterfall quests, kind of a pain in the butt actually, because normally you bank before you go into the tomb because you're not allowed to bring any combat related stuff. So when I go into the tomb, I have to drop all my combat related stuff, which is just sketchy. I hate having my entire bank on the ground for obvious reasons. I made it, no one took my stuff, we're all good. Went ahead, finished off the quest, 30 strength, 40 attack, feeling good. And now I'm going ahead, 
bought myself a machete. Gonna go kill these rock crabs in order to get the items that I need in order to enchant my magical these things. <laughs> Not gonna say that word again. Sup, nature spirit dude. I brought you some clippers. I'd like you to make them green because green is good. And apparently these things, if they're green, are gonna kill this big boss. Cool, sweet, thanks. So although you can flinch tangle root i had left click to attack on and every time i would go back to the spot where i'm out of his range one of his little minions would like walk up to where i need to step and then i'd click on them and attack them and then everything would go into chaos and tangle root would end up hitting like a 10 on me um and i brought like four pieces of food classic uh, kind of got risky but i hid the attack option and had to right click tangle root every time then and i made it out safe i killed him first try and now all that's left is just starting Fairy Tale Part 2. So this makes me a level 32 with access to fairy rings. I don't know, feels kind of cool to me. I've always thought of fairy rings as like this high up level of transportation, even though the requirements really aren't that high. That's just the child in me that played the game 10 years ago coming out. <laughs> I also did Biohazard so I could finish up the Ardoin Diary Part 1 and with fairy rings and tree spirits my life is so good now i use the ardoin cape to teleport me to the monastery and i'm within fairly close range to both a fairy ring and a tree spirit so my mobility has just quadrupled times a million it's oh it's so nice i can travel so easily now um this account is really feels like it's coming together with these transportation gains and it's gonna let me start focusing on really making progress towards starting up construction like i said in chapter one in order to do the construction method i'm most stoked about i need varic diary one and two and both of those will reward me with xp lamps that require level 30 and 40 to use in a skill and since herb lore is the hardest skill to train as an iron man let alone an ultimate iron man i'm going to be putting them all into herb lore but before i can do that i need to get myself up to 30 and 40 herb lore so next episode is all about that herb grind finally the herbs come around really thanks for watching um these things are so much fun to make and I've been super busy with work lately so I haven't had as much time as I'd like to to be putting into both making progress on my Iron Man and actually putting together these videos. I get like one day a week to edit and talk and then the other six days I try and play when I can but I'm working like six days a week and ugh, it's whatever. The craziness will end soon. I think I have three more weeks and then I'm done work. Um, at least for a while. So, booyah! And I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna go really hard into this Iron Man and this series. So, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate everyone who watches and likes, comments, subscribes. Your motivators. Appreciate it. Peace. Yes, I would. If I could, I surely would.